Hi, and welcome back to our rooster painting in 10, 20, 30 minutes or less. So we did the gessoing of the canvas. We put on our background for our rooster painting and we've traced on the pattern or the rooster outline. You can draw it in, hand draw it in if you wish. No problem there, but this is where we should be. Now we're gonna paint some of the reds. Reds are not opaque many times, most of the time. Therefore, we're gonna do several coats. And since this is on a darker background, um, then I'm thinking I may undercoat a little bit with white. That way uh, it keeps the reds a bit brighter for you. So let's go ahead and get painting our first layer of reds and or undercoat. So I haven't decided yet. Sometimes adding yellow ochre to red like the first coat can uh, make it a little more opaque. So we may try that. So let's get painting our reds and maybe I'll include some of the yellows, like the legs are a yellow ochre and things like that. So I'm gonna point my camera down at my painting surface or painting table and we'll get to painting our rooster, finally. So let's get started on our rooster. We're going to do his comb, his waddle and this little ear Bud thing and his legs. The colors I have on my palette are engine red, cardinal red. I was just putting out some red so you can use whichever one you like. The white, wicker white, and um, they're all plaid folk art colors. So if you have other paints, use whatever reds you want. This is not rocket science and you don't have to use exactly the same thing I do. I had said I was going to um, let me get this over here a little bit so I can. I was going to maybe undercoat. So I'm gonna undercoat a portion and see if that's really gonna be necessary. And I'm just following the lines. I'm not being exact. I'm just getting um, the perception of something. Now this little ear thing is white. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And you notice I went way over it. Not a big deal. Okay, so the legs, I'm gonna just go ahead and draw them in in the white and then go over them. Yellows and reds aren't opaque. I've already mentioned that before. And sometimes when you're going over a darker surface, it's easier to undercoat with white and then go over it with the less opaque colors. Sometimes yellow ochre will make um, your reds a little bit more opaque without super changing the color, just for an undercoat, because we're gonna have to do a few coats for the reds in our uh, rooster. I'm getting some of the Cardinal Red on my brush, just to see how it's gonna look with the blue. And you can see the blue tone is coming through, and that's not really something I wanted. So I may go ahead and undercoat. Let me see if I can do this with a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre. This is something you can decide ahead of time if you want to undercoat with all the yellow ochre with the red, or if you want to do the white and then try adding the yellow ochre to the next coat. Let's see. Now you see right there, I kind of went over this other jagged edge, not a big deal. I could come in and reverse paint, use the blue to bring that back in if I want it. Or I can take my brush, let me wipe it out. Excuse me, having to go in front of the camera. I couldn't find my boom arm. We have got some terrible traffic going around today. Lots of construction going on. And I can dampen my brush, my clean brush, and just pull up that paint. Pull it up. Pull it up and it pulls it right out of there. So no big deal if I make an error, just dampen a clean brush and fix it. All right, so this part of his face we are going to do with the red. I want to first put in the very center of his eye, the circular part is a yellow ochre color. So I'm gonna get that in there. So even if somehow I obscured the outside edge of his eye, then it would be already there and noticeable under the yellow. 
Also, I could get a um, liner brush and do the, the black uh, around it, but I'm not, I'm not going to. So the waddle here is going to be the engine red. Again, you could undercoat with the white. And if I'm not liking it once it dries, I will go back, undercoat with white, and then come back and do this. So just work around the eye as best you can. And fill in there. You don't want any big globs. So don't overload your paint on your brush. You're going to be able to see blue through it. Don't worry about that. You're going to come back later with more coats. And so that's the red there for now. I'm going to be able to compare once this dries whether or not I like the undercoated part or not. So we'll let that dry. So for the legs, that white is already dry. So I can come in, forgive me while I go rinse my brush. I can come in and do the legs, which are yellow ochre, still staying with the 10, number 10 flat. I do most of my work with flat brushes. I have just never really had any need for a, an array of brushes, other, you know, different types, depending on the painting. I do the majority of my work with flat brushes, and it works well. And I've just found how to use them to get the different effects. Okay, you notice I went over into the blue because I'm not being super tidy here because I'm talking more than I'm paying attention. And I just clean that edge up. Clean it up. And we're all good. I'm going to put in some more of the reds, like on the, um, right here on his feathers up on the top and some down here. It'll get covered up with a lot of gold but I wanted that in there. It's easier or it's better to put some of your darks in or like the red. I wanted the red to show through the golden colors because he's a real pretty coppery uh, areas on this rooster. So while we were doing the reds, I'm going to continue on. I'll also do another second coat on here while I'm doing this, but first I'm going to get the reds in here. Now I'm loading my brush with Cardinal Red. I think I'm going to stick with the Cardinal Red for the reds on him. I tested out the engine and I like the Cardinal the best. Now I'm just getting on the very corner a touch of burnt umber. It'll just help add some shadows in these areas. Now remember this is going to be brought up and I'm using the chisel edge of my brush and I'm just laying in some spiky strokes. I will reload and I'm dragging some of the burnt umber. A lot of times the color in the back is going to be the predominant color. I just wanted some of that on there. I'm just going to load with Cardinal Red now. And I'm going up a layer. See right here's a layer that I'm going up a layer. Now like I said before a lot of this will get covered later on down the road with more golden. The, the red will just shine through a touch. And it's as if I'm layering feathers. You know how feathers at the bottom and they have a layer of feathers, layer of feathers on chickens. And I'm just laying in the areas that I think are going to have a lot of red in them underneath the golden color. Now this little perch down here patch is really red. In fact, it's, it's very dark, so I'm going to add a lot more burnt umber there. And I'm just going to fill that in right along there. Now this up here is very golden, so I think I'll leave that. Now this is going to get some more uh, different brown. I think I'm going to use a raw umber over it or find some, a coppery red to, to do that there. And then these are going to have some red in it or at least a, a glow, a red glow coming through. So now these over here will need uh, to be done before I finish any of the others because the tail feathers, 
sit under these small feathers here. So these are not going to get anything done with them. This down here is a golden. It has a little bit of red in it. So I'm going to go ahead and you see I'm following the shape with my spiky strokes. So there's that portion. Now I'm going to clean out my brush. Just clean out my brush. We've got those little hints of red in there and I'm going to go over his waddle a little bit. That's the front part to deepen that red. Because as I mentioned several times, I've got a little bead of water on there. Red is not opaque. So sometimes you really have to add the coats, make a thin coats because that way you don't want big globs of paint in there. And I'll add just a hint just a barely a touch of burnt umber and to kind of bring it around the edge to darken that edge. Not too much, just a touch. Now his comb, his comb, I may add a touch of orange to bring that color up a little, just to change the hue slightly or the color slightly. And remember I did a little white under there. I really like the brightness of that. So I could go ahead and do white under all of it, but let's see how it does with just the cardinal. There's no one way to do things. It just make, get a feel for it. Um, if you want to do a trial painting on a, um, multi-surface pad, multimedia pad, that's great. And then you can get a feel for the colors and how they're going to play with each other and what you really want to do. So I like the way the red brought that color up a little bit. Don't overwork it because it starts to lift the paint. And that will have to be good for now because um, it's just at a point where I could lift the paint, but that orange really brightened that red. And in fact, I wouldn't mind adding a bit of that orange to some of these areas too, to give it that really bright color. There's a lot of golden color up there with that orange. It's going to be a kind of a really nice undercoat for the other feathers. I could go over this part again. This under here, which we'll um, put in, is actually a very blue black. So I need to probably get my black out and add a lot of blue toward it, get my blue out and add a touch of black to it. But that's for another segment. So there we have those reds incorporated in here. A little bit of orange. This is pure orange, by the way, on here. So when we add the golden color, they already have a really nice under color to glow through. And I think that is pretty much it. There might be a little touch of red up there. Now it's a good time. I could go over the legs again because the legs and the beak are both dry. And that was um, yellow ochre. Let's get into the bottom of the barrel on that one. So I just load it, bring it in. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly opaque. Remember their legs have, you know, some texture on them. So now we're going to have something on the bottom here. We don't know what yet, but something on the bottom that way we don't have to do his feet. And if you feel better with a smaller brush in his beak area, you see, I'm kind of making a little bit of a mess there. Then feel free to do so. Me, I'll just come in and clean up my edges with a dampened brush. And there we have it. 
So there is doing the rooster's comb, wattle, a little bit of red on his hackles or his feathers, and the yellow ochre. So next part, we'll do the blacks of the tail and the body mixed with a touch of blue. 